Popular Christian teacher Mike Winger says no one created evil. God, who is even more popular, said he created evil. Who are you going to believe? Huh? I'm on a mission from God. In my last video, I showed how some in Christianity teach that Satan is the originator and creator of evil, not God, even though God said specifically he is the creator of evil. Saying that Satan is the creator of evil creates many other problems that have to be accounted for, which I addressed in that video. Some in Christianity realize this problem. They don't want to admit that God is the creator of evil, but they also see the problems with Satan creating evil. So some, like Mike Winger, have come up with a third option. No one created evil. Please note that the Mike Winger video I reference in this video, he distinguishes evil into moral evil and natural evil, and I will explain that as we go through this video. Much of Winger's argument is based on the false idea and false teaching of the free will of humans and other creatures within God's creation. God is the only one with true free will in the universe. He is the one who is making all things happen within his universe, according to his good, pleasing, and perfect will. God is the one who is operating all in accord with the counsel of his will. Ephesians 1.11 in the Concordant Literal New Testament. This first clip from Mike's video is actually the summation of his talk on the non-creation of evil. I think it's important to get his summation so that we can reference that as we continue through this video. So in short, before I go to your guys' questions, God is the source of goodness. Therefore, evil can be real by contrast to God's goodness, but it doesn't have to be created, right? In, in God has reasons for allowing the evil, the moral evil to exist and the natural evils, whether it's free will, greater goods that God's accomplishing. And then finally, God is the solution to the evils that are going on in the world. Mike said that evil doesn't have to be created, but we know that evil is real and it exists. Anything that is real and that exists has to be created. And the scripture is very clear who created all things. John 1, 1 through 3 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was toward God, and God was the Word. This was in the beginning toward God. All came into being through it, and apart from it, not even one thing came into being, which has come into being. And God specifies some of his creation in Isaiah 45, 6-7, from the concordant version of the Old Testament. I am Yahweh, former of light and creator of darkness maker of good and creator of evil. I, Yahweh, make all these things. In Mike's summation, he says that God allows the moral evil and he allows the natural evil. But we saw in Isaiah 45, 7 that God says he is the creator of evil. And in that passage, he does not distinguish between natural evil and moral evil. And notice that he does not distinguish between the types of good that he creates. He creates all good, he creates all evil. That is what God does. God was, in essence, introducing himself to Cyrus, the king of Persia, and he was giving him basic facts of his resume, that he's the creator of light and darkness, good and evil. There are no other gods that create these, but they are created, as opposed to what Mike says. Mike makes this distinction between natural evil and moral evil. And an example that he gives in his video is a tree falling on a man. If that tree falls naturally, say the roots are rotten or the wind blows it over and it kills a man, that's a natural evil. That bad thing happened to that man naturally. But if a man cuts down a tree so it falls on another man and kills him, that is a moral evil. But in Isaiah, there's no distinction between moral and natural evil. God simply says, I'm the creator of evil. The word evil in Isaiah 45, 7 comes from the Hebrew word ra. It is used over 660 times in the Old Testament of the scriptures. The basic meaning of ra is bad. It is the opposite of good. Mike Winger breaks these down into two main categories of evil, natural evil and moral evil. And he also goes further in his video into some of the nuances from different commentaries and lexicons on the word ra. Fierce, sad, troubled, 
that which causes harm, distress, misery, injury, calamity, great loss, misfortune, times of distress, hardship, bad times, when things go wrong in life. And we could probably add a million more to these. You've probably all seen the movie A Million Ways to Die in the West. Well, there's a million various nuances and types of bad and evil in the world. But, as I said before, God makes no distinction which area of evil he is the creator of. He's the creator of all good. He's the creator of all evil. Evil slash bad, when one man is dealing with another man, can be used for non-sinful purposes and for sinful purposes. Examples. A doctor who cuts off a man's finger that is infected to prevent the infection from spreading to the rest of the body and killing the man is actually doing a beneficial evil to that body. The cutting off of the finger is evil or bad to the body, but its goal and purpose is good. On the other hand, a terrorist who cuts off the finger of a man who is his enemy to get information from him is doing a sinful thing to him because he is not loving his enemy. But none of this evil slash bad in the hands of God is sinful because all is brought about by him for ultimately good purposes. So in bringing about all evil, God is never sinning. We have to keep that clear. Even though God brings all evil, God is not sinning in bringing that evil because he has a purpose and a goal for that. One example of evil that Mike Winger brings up in his video is the story of the man born blind in John 9. Then there's another example, though, um, of it being a, a greater good kind of situation. This is a really interesting example in John 9 of why these sort of calamitous events happen. And so in John 9, re read this and, and listen, they're trying to figure out why this guy was born blind. Blindness would be seen as like a calamity thing, right? It's, it's, it's a bad life experience, but it's not, I wouldn't see it as a moral evil, but a natural evil. So in John 9, 1, they're trying to figure out why was this guy born blind? What's the cause? So and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither hath this, uh, this man sinned, nor his parents, but that his work, the works of God should be made manifest in him. What? The, the, nobody sinned to cause the blindness. Not that nobody has sinned in his life. He sinned, his parents have sinned, but it's not the cause of the blindness. The blindness is simply for the greater good of the works of God being manifest in his life. That's interesting. This is an, a specific example from the New Testament of, of a greater good defense of natural evil. The man's born blind and God has in his sovereignty a plan to use it for a greater good. Now, of course, that man was healed by Jesus and he, God glorified himself through that and used it to proclaim the name of Christ. And, and, um, and we look back and we say, okay, so God is sovereign and God is using it. And in Christianity, with all of the trials of life, with all of the pains and the anguish and the unimaginable suffering, we see that God is sovereign and God is using it for some good end, which he doesn't explain to me. I don't know the good end. It's interesting in this example that Mike does not say that it's God that caused the evil, the blindness in this man, but he does say that God will be glorified through it and God can use it. But if you read through this passage, it's very clear that God is the one that caused the blindness. He's the one that brought this evil, this bad situation into this man's life so that the works of God could be manifested in this man. Does Jesus have to say that God caused this? No, because the scriptures we've already looked at reveal that God is the cause of all things, the ultimate cause of all things, and that he is the one that creates evil in all situations of evil. Now I want us to look at an example where Jesus says God is the one who causes the blindness. John 12, 37 through 40 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Yet, after his having done so many signs in front of them, they believed not in him, that the word of Isaiah the prophet, which he said, may be being fulfilled. Lord, who believes our tidings? And the arm of the Lord, to whom was it revealed? Therefore they could not believe, seeing that Isaiah said again, that he has blinded their eyes and calluses their heart, lest they may be perceiving with their eyes and should be apprehending with their heart and may be turning about, and I should be healing them. Jesus is speaking to a throng of people that did not believe in him, even though we see clearly that he did so many signs in front of them. They did not believe so that the word of Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. And notice in verse 39, it says very clearly, therefore they could not believe. And why couldn't they believe? Verse 40, that he, meaning God, 
has blinded their eyes and calluses their heart. Why? Lest they may be perceiving with their eyes and should be apprehending with their heart and may be turning about and I shall be healing them. What a great contrast this is to the man born blind in John 9. Here we see God blinding people to the truth of who Jesus is so that they are not coming to him to be healed. God is the one who brought this evil slash bad of blindness to their eyes so that they could not believe. Both types of blindness are bad. The physical blindness and the blindness that prevents someone from believing in Jesus. But we know that both are caused by God. My question would be to Mike Winger and others who believe like he does, which is worse, the physical blindness or the blindness that keeps someone from believing in Jesus? As far as I know, Mike Winger believes in eternal torment or everlasting punishment, however you want to phrase it. So from that standpoint, the blindness that prevents someone from believing in Jesus is worse. And we see very clearly here that God is the one that caused that blindness in these people. Now, from Mike's standpoint and his theology, that's a horrible evil that God would bring about. And for some of these people, never remedy. So there's no point and no purpose in that evil. But the scriptures clearly teach in the salvation of all through Jesus Christ. And 1 Timothy 2.4 tells us very clearly that God will have all men to be saved and come into a realization of the truth. So these people, even though God had blinded them, it is temporary. Did they believe in this life? I don't know. That doesn't matter. The point is, is that God brought this blindness for a purpose to fulfill his scripture. And so they wouldn't at that time turn to him to be healed. But that doesn't mean that God is through with these people. He has a good purpose in store for these people. And this blindness that they experience will actually come to be a beneficial evil in their lives in the end when they come to realize the truth of who God is and who Jesus is. Let's look at another example of God bringing evil into the lives of people. And this time it's believers. In Philippians 1.29 in the Concordant Literal New Testament, we read the words of Paul to the believers in Philippi. For to you it is graciously granted for Christ's sake, not only to be believing on him, but to be suffering for his sake also. Does suffering come from bad or good? Well, the obvious answer is it comes from bad. Suffering comes into our lives through evil. So we see that God not only grants belief to believers, he grants that they will suffer for Christ's sake also. The Apostle Paul lists some of his sufferings for the sake of Christ in 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. In weariness more exceedingly, in jails more exceedingly, in blows inordinately, in deaths often. By Jews five times I got forty save one. Thrice am I flogged with rods, once am I stoned, thrice am I shipwrecked, a night and a day have I spent in a swamp, in journeys often, in dangers of rivers, in dangers of robbers, in dangers of my race, in dangers of the nations, in dangers in the city, in dangers in the wilderness, in dangers in the sea, in dangers among false brethren, in toil and labor, in vigils often, in famine and thirst, in fasts often, in cold and nakedness. The Apostle Paul knew that he would suffer for the sake of Christ, and he knew that his suffering was from God. One very good way to go nuts in this world is to think about all the individual instances of evil that happen in our own lives and the lives of others. There are things that are horrible that happen in this world and probably even beyond this world in the celestial realm. For us to realize that all of that comes from God that can mess with our mind. I'll, I'll admit that. Nobody likes the evil. Nobody likes the bad that happens. And saying that it's from God, some people just can't handle that. Instead of focusing on all the individual billions of instances of evil that occur probably every day in this world, there's one instance of evil that we should focus on. The greatest act of evil ever committed on this planet and in the universe. The death of of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We read the words of the Apostle Peter in Acts 2, 22 through 24. Men, Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man demonstrated to be from God for you by powerful deeds and miracles and signs, which God does through him in the midst of you, 
according as you yourselves are aware. This one, given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God, you, gibbeting by the hand of the lawless, assassinate, whom God raises, loosing the pangs of death, for as much as it was not possible for him to be held by it. Peter makes it very clear in verse 23 that Jesus was given up by God. He says, this one given up in the specific counsel and foreknowledge of God. It was God who orchestrated this. It was God who moved the individuals to do this. What did they do? We continue in verse 23. Peter speaking to the Israelites, you gibbeting by the hand of the lawless assassinate. The Israelites worked with the Romans to assassinate Christ, the innocent Son of God. This is the worst evil that has ever been perpetrated in God's creation. It was caused and orchestrated by God. But verse 24 tells us the end of the story and the outcome of this beneficial evil. Whom God raises, loosing the pangs of death for as much as it was not possible for him to be held by it. The greatest evil that ever occurred was brought by the hand of God, and the greatest blessing that has ever occurred was also brought by the hand of God out of that evil, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. His death and resurrection purchased the salvation and reconciliation of the entire universe. That's beneficial evil, my friends. This was no natural evil that came upon the Son of God. No tree accidentally fell on him. He was nailed to a tree for your sake, for my sake, for the sake of the entire universe. And it was all brought about by God, our Heavenly Father. And we see that Jesus himself benefited from his sufferings and his death and the glory from his resurrection in Hebrews 2, 9 through 10. Yet we are observing Jesus, who has been made some bit inferior to messengers because of the suffering of death, wreathed with glory and honor, so that in the grace of God he should be tasting death for the sake of everyone. For it became him, because of whom all is, and through whom all is, in leading many sons into glory, to perfect the inaugurator of their salvation through sufferings. Jesus was perfected through his sufferings. His stellar resume, which was already perfect, is being added to in perfection with everything that he does for his heavenly Father and for the creation. As Jesus continues to build upon his stellar and perfect resume, we will see glory upon glory of who he is and what he is capable of doing by the power of his Father. And just as the experiences in Jesus' life, the good and the bad, add to his resume daily as he's continuing to do stuff in his Father's creation towards the goal of God being all in all, so too the experiences that you have in this life, the good and the bad, those are things that God adds to your resume to make you who you are. There is a purpose in the evil that comes into your life, a good purpose from God. Check this out. Ecclesiastes 1.13 in the Concordant Version of the Old Testament. I applied my heart to inquiring and exploring by wisdom concerning all that is done under the heavens. It is an experience of evil Elohim has given to the sons of humanity to humble them by it. God is the one bringing the experience of evil into our lives for multiple purposes. One of the greatest of these is to humble us and to keep us humble. But it goes beyond humility alone. The Apostle Peter says, God is resisting the proud, yet is giving grace to the humble. Be humbled then under the mighty hand of God, that he should be exalting you in season. The experience of evil causes us to be humble so that we can experience the grace and lifting up that comes from God. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 tells us the great result of the grace of God. For in grace, through faith, are you saved, and this is not out of you. It is God's approach present, not of works, lest anyone should be boasting. For his achievement are we, being created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God makes ready beforehand, that we should be walking in them. The evil that comes into our lives from God to humble us, so that we can be in a position of grace, so that then we can be saved 
by our Heavenly Father. For truly, we are His achievement. Everything is His work, and His work will culminate in Him being all in all. If this video has benefited you, I ask you to hit the like button so that this message can get out to a wider audience. I promise, as usual, if you hit the like button, I will not tell your pastor or your pastor's wife, and I will not tell Mike Winger. I suggest that you watch this video next.